And it's a statistical certainty that, that thousands of you watching this on, on your, your handhelds at airports, stranded at airports all around the world, you'll have been here before. You'll have been stuck either leaving or getting back uh, from wherever you were trying to head to because of another breakdown in the UK air traffic control software. Why does it keep happening? Well, Transport Secretary Mark Harper joins us now to talk about many things, but let's start with what is most urgent for a lot of people stranded. Uh, why does it keep breaking down? Will you be launching a formal inquiry into why the software keeps failing? Because you have the power to. And why do we not have an effective backup system? OK, well, look, f first of all, let me just add to what National Air Traffic Services said yesterday when they apologised to all of the people that have been impacted. I know there will be thousands of people that were hoping to fly yesterday whose journeys will have been disrupted. It's happened to me before in the past. I know how frustrating it is, so I'd add my apology to theirs. On your specific questions, first of all, uh, an outage of this magnitude hasn't happened for nearly a decade. The system actually normally is very reliable. There was a technical issue yesterday morning which meant they had to revert to a, a, a manual backup system uh, with their priority, obviously, to be making sure that people could continue flying in and out of Britain safely. That has less capacity than their normal system, which is why there were a significant number of flights that were cancelled and people were disrupted. Uh, and on your final point about an inquiry, uh, a problem of this magnitude, there will have to be an independent look at it by the Civil Aviation Authority, uh, and then a report will come to me, and we'll look at that to see whether there are lessons to be learned about reducing the imp risk of it happening again and whether there are things we can do to put in place further checks. Wouldn't it be well, great? So Wouldn't it be great? Take place. Sorry, Richard, Would just one second. On, so, yeah. this, this, uh, so this outage, you say, uh, this particular thing hasn't happened for mm -hmm. more than a decade, mm -hmm. but there have been many other things that have caused big problems, haven't there, like the e-gates uh, recently and then many others over the last 10 or so years. Um, so, and we've already heard this morning that actually one way to solve it would be, because I understand you have the power to influence this, to increase more investment into this. Well, well hang on. When you just... At the beginning of the programme, you, Richard said that there were lots of issues every year with National Air Traffic Services. Mm -hmm. that, that isn't correct. Normally, the system works very well. There hasn't been a National Air Traffic Service issue on this scale for almost a decade. I didn't say that there'd been, I didn't, I didn't say there'd been one on this scale, Minister. I said that they were a frequent occurrence. July 2019, 50 flights cancelled at various London airports because of radar problems at Swanwick. The year before, 2018, again at Swanwick, delayed flights by 20 minutes for three weeks at Stansted. 2017, do you hear the sequence? We're going back a year at a time. But, now, you but, may have had a couple of years where things have been reasonably OK. But, the pandemic. But, but, do, do, can you not accept that people watching this, whether they're not going to the airport because the flight's been cancelled or they're stuck at an airport, their hearts will sink when they hear you trying to downgrade the problem no, and say Richard, it's not that bad, cos it's Richard, terrible, no, Minister. Richard, it's awful. I, I didn't. I opened my conversation with you by accepting... I apologise, first of all, on behalf of National Air Traffic Services for all of the people that were disrupted yesterday, and I accepted it was a very significant issue yesterday that caused the cancellation of thousands of flights and disrupted thousands of passengers. And then you immediately and I said that it hadn't upset. happened for 10 years. And, and I people said, don't care about that. They care I, that it's happening now. Yes, no, and I, I absolutely accept that. And airlines are working incredibly hard to get their customers back home. And they have a responsibility. And I uh, set that out yesterday. I tweeted it out yesterday the rules that the CAA have in place, that airlines have the responsibility to look after their customers mm. to get them home and to look after them if they're disrupted. It's important that people know what their rights are in these circumstances. I absolutely am not downplaying it. I know how difficult this is. I've been a victim of flight cancellations before. Oh, it's have. very stressful, particularly if you're travelling with children and families travelling as they would have been on a 
Bank Holiday Monday, which is why I opened by apologising to them all for that disruption. And it's lovely that and you've given out that what personal happened. apology, but I suppose what people want is a sense of it being fixed. So whether it be, and yep. these all come under your umbrella, but I realise that they're all different problems, but whether it be strikes, whether it be problems with the rail network, whether it be problems with air traffic control, whether it be issues with airlines, you know, it all comes under transport. And there is a sense of systems being broken literally broken yesterday, but otherwise just generally things being broken. And if there hasn't been investment, we're now paying the cost for it, aren't we? Well, let me pick up those two points. So okay. on National Air Traffic Services, there's been a significant amount of investment in the uh, system. There was a technical issue yesterday which took place. It was fixed yesterday early afternoon. But, but I we had haven't a got a backup system. Impact. So immediately, as, as Richard was saying earlier, if your phone goes wrong, you go back to the shop. You're in a position where you can say, this system goes wrong, you don't have a backup, I'm going back to the shop. Sort it so, out. So the, there is a backup system. The uh, airspace kept flying. No, the system kept operating uh, safely, which is the most important right. priority. But it's got a lower capacity, clearly, than when the system is operating normally, which so is So I what suppose what you're saying is it went over to human beings again, which that's a whole different debate about whether that's better or not anyway. But it went back to human beings. We don't have a technical backup system. If we're relying on technology, it would seem a good idea to have investment for a technical backup system. Yes, and one of the issues there is if you have a system like that, it that can be vulnerable to the same yeah. problem that caused the system to go wrong in the first place. But look, we are going to have an independent look at this. The CAA will look at it and report back to me. And clearly, if there are lessons to be learned as a result of what happened right. yesterday, we'll learn them. On your question about rail strikes, it's very clear. There is a very reasonable offer on the table from the rail uh, operating companies to the people that work for them. It's a 5% offer for last year, a 4% offer for this year with some reform. It's on the table. It's waiting for the RMT to put it to their members mm -hmm. and ask their members what they think. So there's an offer on the table the dispute could be resolved if, I believe, if that offer was put to the well, members. I think the members want to take that's it. That's your so view, my, isn't it, Minister? My... We, we've had the rail unions saying other things about well, they should inability put it to, to their negotiate. Members. But I understand that you're putting your case in that, and it's a different problem, but it's the perception. We will yeah. move on to other things. Now, yeah, let's talk we? about you, Les. Um, obviously, the London Mayor's woken up this morning. It's his big day. Um, you think that he's simply raising money in these, uh, these charges, these £12.50 if your car doesn't, doesn't fit the bill. You think he's doing it purely to fill a black hole in his coffers, don't you? You don't think it's anything to do with air pollution or people's health? Well, I've looked at his own impact assessment, which sets out what he thinks is going to happen as a result of expanding ULES to the whole of Greater London. And it's very clear that it says it will only have a minor or negligible effect on air quality. And so the only conclusion I can draw is it's about raising money. And I think that trying to put that cost on hard-working Londoners and indeed those outside London who have to come into London for work, for example, is the wrong thing to do. It's the Mayor of London's decision, backed by the Labour leader. I think it's the wrong decision uh, and I don't think he should be doing it. But I don't have the power to block it. You have absolutely no powers in this regard at all, do you? You simply have to stand by and watch something happen that you, as you've just said, think is a, is a completely political... These um, are... Yes, this, this is a power of the Mayor of London. What we are doing is backing a backbench amendment to a new piece of legislation that, for the future, will mean that these sort of road-charging schemes could only be rolled out if the local councils also agreed to them. I think that's a sensible step forward, because we know from the Mayor of London's own website, that he's planning on a wider set of road charging, road pricing schemes in London. And I just don't think that's the right thing to do. We don't want driving to be only available for those that are rich. What would you, okay, if so you were Mayor, what would you do, do to, improve? to improve air quality? What, what would your solution be? Well, in outer London, there, there isn't a, a, an issue that needs to be dealt with here. And this rollout of the ULES scheme isn't going to so deal you don't with improving think there is air, air quality. Pollution. We have Sadiq Khan on later on in the programme, so it's very interesting to get your views very clear to put to him. So you don't think there's an air pollution problem 
in these outer regions? In, in outer London, his scheme, the question you need to ask him is, his own impact assessment says that rolling out ULEZ across Greater London is only going to have a minor or negligible effect on air quality in those outer London boroughs. So it's clear from his own impact assessment that he prepared that this isn't about air pollution, it's about raising money uh, from hard-pressed Londoners, and I don't think that's the right so thing to do. So what would you do to improve air quality? Well, look, I think there are lots of things uh, you can do. One of them, clearly, one of the things we're doing if you uh, going forward is we're looking at having a zero-emission vehicle mandate, which will both deal with uh, air pollution but also carbon emissions from vehicles, which is one of the important things we've got to do. I don't think what you do is put a charge on hard-working Londoners and make it harder How would that for the poorest work? motorists would that be a to drive in London. Who would be responsible for paying for that? How would that work? No, that's what we're planning on doing in, in the future, about ah. moving away from uh, petrol and diesel vehicles to zero-emission vehicles, to electric vehicles. You don't deal with this by stopping hard-working <laughs> Londoners being able to get to work to run their small businesses in a scheme that your own impact right. assessment, the Mayor's impact assessment, says is going to make practically no difference to air All quality right. in London. Minister, can we just uh, go out the way we came in? Uh, just quickly going back to sure. the airport story. One, one quick sentence. We're hearing this morning the Times, uh, the, the, the Mail, other newspapers online speculating that this whole chaos started with a, a badly filed flight plan from a single French airline. Have you heard that? Do you know any, any detail at all about that? So, I know it was an issue with the flight planning system, but there's going to be a proper investigation into what happened, uh, why it caused such a, a big impact, and I'm going to wait for that independent report okay. from the CA, and then we'll look to see if there are any steps that need to be taken in the future. OK, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Mr Harper, thank you.